Well, good morning. How is everybody? Um, well, uh, I want to welcome you to Federal Hall National Memorial. Uh, my name is Jesse, and um, I'm actually with somebody named Emily, who's uh, taking care of the technical aspects here. And um, as you know, we're here to talk about the Whiskey Rebellion. And um, does anybody know anything about the Whiskey Rebellion? It's about how taxes were put on our by it was more taxes. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, okay, very good. So we're, we'll try to fill in a couple of uh, gaps and details, and um, perhaps uh, during, the, uh, during the talk, if you have any comments or questions, you know, we can, uh, we can deal with that. Um, the first thing I want to talk about uh, before we get started is that um, we work for the National Park Service, and uh, there are over 400 national parks, historic sites, uh, throughout the country. I do apologize for the map. I know you can't see it very well, but I do uh, suggest you uh, you look this up because uh, there's probably a lot. Have you been to national parks? In, the school's in Arizona, right? Yes. Have you been to any national parks in Arizona? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Well, as you probably know, there are national parks, state parks, city parks, et cetera, um, but we do work for the federal government, uh, which is uh, and our agency is the National Park Service. Now this is where I'm talking to you from. Uh, this was a custom house built in 1842, but it's on the site of the nation's first capital, and it's on Wall Street. Um, does anything, anybody know anything about Federal Hall? Not a whole lot? Okay, well. Um, they, they visited it when they just went to New York uh, two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Um, okay, well, if you look at the bottom of the screen and you see the uh, financial district, see, that's where we are. We're on an island. Uh, most of you probably know Manhattan is an island in New York City, and it has all different neighborhoods, as you can see. And we're all the way at the southern tip, because uh, that's where the original colonial settlement was. Now, uh, back then, it was uh, a, a city hall for the English, because the English, England was the mother country, and New York was the colony. And uh, George Washington was inaugurated here in the, in the previous building. And uh, his vice president was here, John Adams. Uh, this is his cabinet, uh, some of you may know. Uh, does anybody know the most famous person in this picture? And there's a musical about him right now? Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Uh, the Bill of Rights was drafted here, uh, you may or may not know. And once again, um, this is what the original building looked like. And uh, if you go back in time to the English colonial period, and um, lots of activities happened here, like the colonists used to protest uh, against taxes. And um, eventually, uh, in 1789, the Constitution is ratified. And we find that one of the, does anybody know, can anybody tell me anything about the Constitution, why the Constitution is important? You know, this is how we run the government. This is like a blueprint. Um, this gives us our, uh, well, number one, it sets up what the government can do. And number two, with the Bill of Rights, it tells us what our rights are. And very importantly, it permits the government to tax. Now, um, anybody recognize this gentleman? Yes. Alexander Hamilton. So now Alexander Hamilton is famous as Secretary of the Treasury, and he feels strongly that we need a taxing system here. Now, wh why do you think the government needs to tax? Any uh, volunteers? Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, oh, um, to help for um, the finances with uh, police, um, firefighters. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. Services. Um, uh, the government builds uh, roads and bridges and lighthouses. It pays for the military. And as um, your teacher said, uh, it pays for all kinds of services, like the police department and the fire department. 
And um, on top of all that, the country was in debt. So Alexander Hamilton steps in and he proposes to the government that we need a tax system. And uh, what he wants to do, though, is, uh, well, let me ask you this question. There are all kinds of taxes. There's income tax, there's sales tax that we have today. Uh, they didn't have that back then. Does anybody know what kind of tax Hamilton proposed? It's called an excise tax, and it's usually a tax that's attached to uh, luxury goods. And back then, whiskey was considered a luxury. Does everybody know what whiskey is? Yes. Oh, I was hoping you'd say no. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, just kidding. Um, okay, you know, whiskey and alcohol in general is, uh, is it's, there's a mechanical process whereby you take uh, various um, grains, for example, like wheat or corn or rye, and you heat them up and you catch the vapor. And uh, some alcohol is used for medicinal purposes and some is used as a beverage. Now, um, as I mentioned, it uh, starts as a grain. Um, here's a gentleman uh, uh, doing some wheat farming out in the Midwest. So this is what the frontier would have looked like back then, and this is what the old whiskey jugs would have looked like. But now, the uh, people who lived on the frontier were not very happy about getting taxed on whiskey. And, uh, uh, they felt they were being singled out. Now, people did, some people supported the whiskey tax. Uh, for example, the big distillers out on the East Coast, they were making a lot of money so they could afford it. But the people on the frontier were very poor. And there was another group that actually supported the tax. And these were people that were anti-drinking. And uh, they just felt alcohol was bad for you, so you might as well tax it. Maybe that will discourage people from drinking. But the whiskey tax becomes law. And it's none other than President Washington who determines what the districts are and uh, who the supervisors are going to be. And the ball is set in motion. Now, the people on the frontier, you know, it's interesting. Are, how many schools are with me today? I think just one. Just one from Arizona. Now, um, Arizona, of course, is in the southwestern portion of the United States. And um, the West back then was not Texas or Colorado or Wyoming or Arizona. The West back then was what we call the Midwest today. And so we have uh, uh, people in the, in the frontier in the West, like the Western portions of the 13 states, Kentucky, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, they're all growing grain, they're making whiskey. But as I mentioned, Whiskey is also being produced in the East on large plantations, you see, where it was a big business. Oops. Hey, did you know that George Washington was the biggest distiller in the country? He made a beverage called rye, which is a type of whiskey made from a grain called rye. Um, of course, this is a collage that uh, someone uh, 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 made for artistic purposes. Um, but it's true that he had the biggest distillery in the country. Now, the people on the frontier are very poor. And uh, uh, here's a good picture of the frontier, by the way. Um, everybody can see the east, uh, east Coast, which had all the states, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. And the area in white is called Appalachia. Some people say Appalachia. And that's where the poor frontier people lived. Oops. Hey, you know who these guys are? Oh, my gosh. That's John Wayne and Walter Brennan. You see, I threw this in here because uh, as I mentioned before, most people associate the West with Texas and, and Wyoming and Colorado, but uh, really um, it's Appalachia that was the West back then. Now, this is uh, a, a photo from the late 19th century, but it looks something like what the pioneers and the people who lived in Appalachia uh, would have looked like back in the late 1700s. Again, I want to emphasize it's wheat and grain they're growing. And what are they doing with it? Well, they're baking it. Oops, what's that? Can anybody read that for me? It says here that it has potato, apple, cheese, onions, butter, and spices. So why do you think they call it guinea pig pie? 
Guess who's the guinea pig? I guess if you try it, you're a guinea pig. But it is a recipe from the uh, 18th century, so it is uh, time friendly with regard to our topic. Now, again, the people out west, and of course, when I say out west, you know what I mean, Appalachia, uh, uh, operated small stills. So still, a still is the mechanism by which you make the whiskey. And they used it to trade with. Here's a gentleman trading with a Native American. But they had other grievances too out there. It wasn't just the whiskey tax that bugged them. There were Indian wars. Here's an Indian war from the point of view of the settlers. Here's an Indian war from the point of view of the Indians. Also, the Spanish controlled the Mississippi. I don't know if you know that story. Um, but before it became French and we bought the Louisiana Purpose, uh, purchase, it was the Spanish, and they refused to permit our people from using the Mississippi. So the frontier people wanted the government to step in and help them out so they could send their whiskey down the Mississippi. So there's lots of grievances that they had, uh, not just the whiskey tax, but people on the frontier were unhappy in general. So they reacted and they resisted. Now, first they demand, we don't want the whiskey tax. But it fell on deaf ears. So they organized conventions. Now, it is throughout Appalachia, but I have a map here of southwestern Pennsylvania, because that's where most of the protests took place. They took place in, uh, uh, in, in various farms and localities. And uh, we find that uh, a convention in Pittsburgh uh, takes place, dominated by moderates. This is very important, folks. Moderates. These are people who want peace. They want to achieve their ends through peaceful means. And you're going to hear the name Brackenridge come up. He wants to prevent violence. There's his picture. So, oh, by the way, look at Pittsburgh back then. Isn't that interesting? Just a little town. So the government listens to the people at the conventions. They, li they listen to the protesters and they lower the tax one cent. Of course, back then, that would have been something like 25 cents today. So it was significant if you add it up. But that wasn't good enough. So they turned to violence. The protesters turned to violence. And they capture uh, the revenuers, the people sent out to collect the money. And this poor guy is getting tarred and feathered. Which Has anybody ever heard of being tarred and feathered? because they used to do that during the revolution too. See, they would take pine tar. It's not the same as road tar, but it's from a tree. They heat it up and they apply it to the body. Uh, it's a form of punishment. And this is what they were doing, anybody who came out to collect money and people who cooperated as well. And again, I do want to emphasize that uh, the states looked a little bit different back then. Um, this is all going to change though. Uh, the government's going to put its foot down and uh, uh, stop the expansion of states, but you get a sense here of, uh, of how the states were originally expanding west. And picture that the protests are happening in the western portion of the states. So how does the government react? Well, Hamilton, our beloved Hamilton, the guy who they have the musical about, he wants to suppress the violence. So he enlists the aid of uh, various uh, people to, uh, to negotiate with the rebels. Um, but this doesn't sit well with the rebels. Uh, now, there's a group called the Mingo Association. We don't have any pictures of them. But I thought this picture might look something like what they look like. They were ferociously against the whiskey tax. Now, they start erecting liberty poles like they did during the revolution. It's a sign of protest. And we get to the heart of the matter. So I'm going to have to take a vote at this point. I know you don't know the whole story, but who is right? Is the government right because the government is elected by the people? Or is it the people that is right because what they want is not being listened to? So I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Who's in favor of the government at this point because they're elected by the people? Can I see a show of hands? And what about, and who's on the side of the people rebelling? 
Okay, so we'll see if you still feel this way in the end. So Washington issues a proclamation that uh, we will have to enlist the military. And he sends revenuers, people to collect tax, and, uh, and uh, arrest people who are, uh, who are resisting. And by the way, there was a gentleman named Tom the Tinker. Now, um, we don't really know what he looks like either. But um, I like to think he looks like this gentleman with a big smile on his face. Uh, he was a rebel, uh, and he wants to uh, put an end to the tax. So things heat up. Things get worse. They, I don't know if you know the expression to burn somebody in effigy. That means you're not really burning the person, but you're burning a replica of the person. So they start burning eff in effigy uh, some of the political figures. And uh, we find that some of the revenuers hide out in the local farms. And the whiskey protesters surround the farms, and um, gunfights break out. Uh, in one case, they burn the house down, and um, then there's a ceasefire. And believe it or not, during the ceasefire, the rebel leader gets shot. He's murdered in cold blood. So we find that this isn't going to work. The rebels retreat by the Monongahela River to decide upon what to do next. Now, the rebels are furious, and they want to go to Pittsburgh, because remember, this is mainly taking place in western Pennsylvania, and they want to burn the place down. They think that the people in Pittsburgh, this is not Pittsburgh, by the way, this is Sodom in the Bible. They compare Pittsburgh to Sodom and Gomorrah. Can you imagine? Because of all the sin that's taking place in Pittsburgh, they compare it to this biblical city where supposedly a lot of sin happened. They, they create their own flag. Now, it's based on the American flag. It has six counties, uh, pardon me, six bars representing six counties, five in Pennsylvania, one in Virginia. Oh, here's a map, by the way, of where all this is taking place, the Monongahela uh, Pennsylvania by the Monongahela River. Oh, isn't it pretty? This is what the countryside looks like. Now, we find, oh, and by the way, Washington sends militias now at this point. Here's a militia flag. Here's Washington, uh, by the way. Uh, he's going to lead troops, and he's going to review the troops. I don't know how you feel about this, but the government was so worried about the violence spreading and about people not listening to the government and paying their tax that they send out thousands of people. It was a huge peacetime army to quell the rebellion. Here's Washington meeting some of the rebels, and here he's reviewing the troops. So when the rebels see all these government troops coming out, they give up. And the Whiskey Rebellion's over. So the big question, of course, is did Washington do the right thing? by scaring the people, by sending out so many troops. Now, at this point, I'd like to hand over the conversation to you guys, because I really want to hear some of your thoughts on this matter. And I'm going to turn to um, my uh, technical expert here. Um, um, do you think we need to um, make the picture bigger of the class at this point? It's just so you know, it's been buffering quite a bit, so we missed a few things. Oh. They, were, they wanted to know the answer to uh, who, uh, what, what was the guinea pig? Is that what it was? The yeah, guinea pig yeah. pie? Oh, yeah, isn't that cool? Um, okay, you know, um, I don't know if you guys use the word cuisine. You know, cuisine is the fancy word for, like, the type of food people eat in different regions or different parts of the world. And so cuisine has changed a lot through time. Like what we consider normal, like for example, I might go home and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or um, but in another part of the world, they mix peanut butter and soy sauce, and they make a sauce out of that, and they put it on meat or rice. Excuse me. <coughs> so back in, uh, for example, in the Stone Age, people might have been eating oatmeal with meat, and. Uh, uh, we find that uh, the native peoples of the Americas had a food called pemmican, which was uh, bu dried buffalo with berries. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that cuisine is basically based on what's available. 
So what was called guinea pig pie, see, the word guinea pig, of course, means an animal that you test something on. So imagine a pie with cheese and onions and salt and pepper and nutmeg and different spices. You know, it might not be something that we would eat today. So they make a joke that whoever eats it is like a guinea pig. So does everybody understand that now? Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Did we, was there anything else that was buffered that we missed? I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Uh, tell me, I mean, uh, somebody please, I mean, who was right? To this day, historians do not agree. Was the government right in suppressing the Whiskey Rebellion? What about the poor frontier people? I mean, can you imagine nothing else was taxed in the country except them and the whiskey? They were using the whiskey as a medium of exchange, and, uh, and you saw how poor they looked. So who was right? Does anybody have any ideas? I mean, you don't have to be an expert. You know, you could just throw something on the table so we can open up a discussion. Okay, let me put it this way. If you were a frontier person, you, how would you feel? Uh, Forget about who you are yourself. Put yourself in the place of a frontier person. Uh, how would I you feel? Go ahead. I think the people were right. Yes, I see, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Okay, now let's look at it from the point of view of the government. The government was in debt. And they were trying to create laws and create order. So if you were a member of the government, uh, who do you think, would you, would you sympathize with, with the frontier people? Or would you feel that uh, the government needed to be strong? Because we need a government. We can't have anarchy or, um, or disorder and chaos. Does anybody see that point of view? Even if you don't agree, does anybody see that point of view? Not really, don't see a lot, a lot of hands. Okay, well, you know, listen, I'm probably hitting you with a lot of new stuff. I don't expect you to really, um, you know, have a, a, perhaps an opinion about this on the spot, but it's something to think about. Um, you know, this was, this could have been the first Civil War, but the Civil War was averted because Washington sends the troops and the whiskey rebels give up. Very few people were killed, by the way. I should have mentioned that before. Um, there are only about um, a handful of deaths, probably a dozen or so. Um, everybody who went to trial was uh, pardoned. Uh, so nobody would, stayed in jail, nobody was executed. And then when Jefferson became president, he took the tax away. They voted for Jefferson, by the way. Um, uh, and they took the party, they took the office away from Adams, who was Washington's vice president, second president. Um, so, you know, these types of events have a profound impact on American history. You know, American history goes in certain directions uh, because of these types of events. That's why we're here today, uh, because this was a pivotal moment. So I would like you to think about it uh, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, come to uh, some conclusions as you study history, uh, because um, it's a question that's undecided. Maybe one day, if you're interested in history, you can actually write a book about the subject. So thanks, everybody.